tonight fishing on the beautiful Ligurian coast. The non knowing, you know, what we're gonna catch is like, yes! A bizarre way to make bread. Very interesting technique. I never seen this done before. And I create a feast. Oh, -ho. look at that. To bring together new friends. To you and to all your families. So lovely to have Grazie, you here. Gino. I love you all. <laughs> this is my Italian escape. As a southern Italian, it's always fascinating for me to explore the north of my home country. So I've come to Liguria, a diverse region where the coast meets the mountains. If you look at the map of Italy, Liguria lies to the northwest, and the fishing town of Camogli is where I'm starting my journey. It's early morning when I arrive, just in time to see the little fishing harbour awake. In the late Middle Ages, this was a large port. Trade thrived so much that Camogli was known as the city of a thousand white sailing boats. At the end of the 19th century, its industry went into decline and Camogli's fishing community struggled. I admire people who make a living out of fishing because I know how hard it is. And you know, especially in the winter, it's gonna be very cold. I, I, I got a lot of respect for them, loads of respect. But in recent years, the town has been thrown a lifeline. I've come to meet Renato, his daughter Erika, and her boyfriend Andrea, who make a living from pesca turismo, or fishing tourism. Captain, are we ready? Ready! Come on, let's go. let's go. For 10 months of the year, these guys take tourists out to experience what life is like for Camogli's fishermen. And whatever the tourists catch, they eat. The weather is great today, but this can be a challenging job that relies on kind seas and a good supply of fish. It looks like a great commute to work, but the uniform needs a little improvement. See, I thought being Italian, we would be, you know, slightly smarter, elegant. a little bit more elegant. I look like a pillock. Ready, go, ready. Let's go fish. The crew cast their nets last night, so they know exactly where to try for fish today. I love fishing back in the UK, so I have seen how unpredictable it is. I think the no knowing, you know, what we're gonna catch is like, yes! I've got my fingers crossed for a whopper. I can see the net and I can see fish. We've got the first guest here. That's like rockfish. This is small, the water. Bye bye. So back the first the fish we caught straight back into the sea. We have to be gentle with the sea. Oh, well, as I always say, size isn't everything. How often do you come to the sea to pull the nets? Ah, oh, we pull the nets two, three times per week. Good living? Uh, sometimes a little heavy. I can see why there is a lot of tiddlers about. This is tiny. <laughs> can you cook this? It's the beginning of the right side. We move on to another net, and hopefully, better luck. I can see one fish, but something has beaten us to it. See, look, they were telling me before that when the fish is like this, octopus. it's been uh, eaten by the octopus. So the octopus gets on there and he sucks all the flesh out, and it really annoys him, really annoys the captain. It starts to really annoy me as well. 
Oh, what a waste of a fish. Beautiful trigger. This one fried would have been fantastic. Finally, our patience pays off. Oh, nice. That's a good one. Look at that. A plump hake. And the fish keep on coming. Ah, oh. wow. Erika. Niente male, eh? What's the name of this fish? Cernia. Cernia. That's beautiful. Look at that. That must be at least, what, two kilo? Three. Three? Three. Nice. Can't wait to show to my friends in uh, London. They're going to be so jealous. <laughs> Every time I fish, they're like this. Look at that. Bello, eh? This is a very nice fish. Now that we caught our lunch, it's time for some of the workers to relax and take in the glorious Ligurian coastline, while Renato transforms from captain to chef. Ladies and gentlemen, lunch is ready. Bravo. Bravo. What a gentleman. Yeah, what a gentleman, my dad. He's breaded and fried the fish. It's simple, fresh, and beautifully done. Fantastic. See, this is the way fish should be served. From the sea, straight into the plate. And the view of Camogli is not bad, is it? Mm -hmm. Wow. I think I'm going to come here for lunch more often. <laughs> you if should. you guys don't mind. Mm -hmm. What a perfect way to spend a morning. Salute. 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 I've had such a fantastic time with the guys from the boat. And as a little thank you, I want to prepare a special Ligurian feast for them later. So where better to perfect my first dish than overlooking the beautiful Ligurian coast? I'm making sibas in caper and butter sauce with grilled marinated carrots. Now, where do we start? It's very simple, it's with carrots, right here. My carrots have been boiled in salted water, then cooled. We're gonna add a little touch of olive oil and some salt. Make sure you have a hot griddle pan ready. Now listen to this. Perfect. And these are just not gonna be any boring carrots. These are gonna be absolutely fantastic. Cooking carrots like this increases their sweetness. And I'll be marinating them in garlic and fresh mint leaves. Always keep an eye on the carrots to make sure that you turn them around. Beautiful. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Those griddle marks on the carrots, I have to admit, they look quite sexy. The fragrant marinade is so simple. A little more of extra virgin olive oil. A sprinkling of salt and a little chili a couple of pinches, no more than that. White wine vinegar gives just enough acidity. And you will see if it's incorporated well, because the oil starts to get a kind of a cloudy color. The only thing that you're left to do, pick up the carrots and they go straight in. And if you can keep them for about five to 10 minutes to marinate, that it will be Perfect. Now for my sea bus, I've got some seasoned flour. Just pick up the fish, straight on top like this. Once the fish is completely coated, I want you to make about four cuts in the skin, so it won't curl up in the pan. That's it. Job done. Then it's time to fry with a good Italian olive oil. And 
then straight after the olive oil, we're gonna add butter. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when you put oil and butter together, the butter is not gonna burn. Skin side down straight away. The fish will take about five or six minutes on the skin side. And meanwhile, get the butter sauce ingredients ready. Fresh parsley, wonderful garlic, and salty capers will work so well with the sweet sea bass. Oh, -ho, look at that. The second side takes less time. So now I can bring the beautiful sauce together with fresh oil. Capers, parsley, and garlic all goes in. I bet. All I need is a lemon. And finally, the essential butter. It's time to serve it up. The garlic, the fresh mint, the extra virgin olive oil. Now we get the fish in. Fantastico. So nice and crispy. The last touch. That's it. Look at that. And there you have it. Sibas in capers and butter sauce served with grilled carrots and a beautiful marinade. And I really hope that the guys from the boat, they're gonna like it. But one dish doesn't make a feast. If I'm going to impress Erika and the crew, I'll need more typical Ligurian recipes, using the best local ingredients. So I've come to the town of Recco, where there is always one thing on the menu, focaccia. Set to date from the 12th century, Recco's focaccia is a crispy flatbread stuffed with hoozing, creamy cheese. It's not like the thick, doughy version you may have tried in the UK. This one's totally irresistible. I'm meeting Biagio Palombo. Biagio! Ciao, Gino! Who's been a baker for 40 years and is a master at the local speciality. Com'è che è così famosa sta focaccia di Ricco? Che c'ha? E della pasta, farina, olio e sale e basta, senza okay. lievito, nessuna aggiunta di niente, niente. Ma what are the real secret ingredients? But I said the most important thing is love and passion to put in there. I'm with him, so I like it so far. His technique reminds me of home. I like uh, Neapolitan pizza. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. This is the base of the focaccia and it's covered in creamy, mild stracchino cheese. To me, it's, it looks like quite a lot of cheese. He said, yes, but it's light. I said, well, how can it be that light if you put all this cheese in it? He said, no, the dough, it will absorb it and it makes it very fragrant and light. Very interesting technique. I never seen this done before. Hey, allora, qui mi aiuti te, eh? ah. e qui ti aspetta. Now he said it's the turn for me to help him. Una... So, so far, it looks like uh, a white pizza. Here goes with the top of this giant cheese sandwich. Sotto? Arana, così. Così? Sì. Okay. He said, go with your hands underneath sì, sì. and uh, swim like a frog. Okay. Non ti si rompe, bravo. Non si rompe, no, va? No, no, assoluto, no, tranquillo. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And it just stretches. Sì. Vai, vai tranquillo. This is like making a bed. Just a few finishing touches. All right, that's cool. Like a, like a Cornish pasty. Un goccio di sale. Salt, okay. E olio locale. Olio locale. He said only with the best of extra virgin olive oil. And after six minutes in the oven. Oh, look at that. This looks incredible. It's the moment I've been waiting for. Brucia. Mm. 
The thing is very crispy, very light, but you can see that the cheese, it makes everything nice and gooey. It's very interesting texture. Wow, buono però, eh? Mm. L'hai fatta a te? Buono. Eh. I can see why people, they're coming from all over the place to have the focaccia di Reco. Speriamo continui. Buono. Excellent, excellent. Biagio's focaccia will be an amazing part of my Ligurian feast. But I need one more dish to complete my menu and it has to include the ultimate Italian herb, basil. This leafy green plant came to the Mediterranean via India. The Ligurians went crazy for it and made basil the star ingredient in Italy's favorite sauce, pesto. To the Italian people, pesto is really, really important. It's like saying, how important is pizza for Neapolitan people? Everything is everything. Pesto originated here in Liguria, so it's no surprise that all of the ingredients for this classic green sauce come directly from this area. It is a perfect place to make pesto, simply because they got the mineral from the sea, going into the basil, so they make the best basil ever. They have a very good quality extra virgin olive oil and the pine kernels. Oh, they're delicious around here. Now, I simply have to use pesto for my Ligurian feast. And I'm going to make a dish that's so typical of the region. And it's pasta with pesto, with green beans and potatoes. And where do I start? is right here with my pistol and mortar. Try to use young basil leaves for this sauce. There are no strict rules, so I'm adding rockets. I love the bitterness of the rocket leaves against the sweetness of the basil. Add a touch of salt, then some pungent garlic, and a mild olive oil that won't overpower the ingredients. And now the only thing that I have to do, start to pesto. You could use a food processor here, but the traditional method gives my pesto a more rustic texture. Trust me, it's gonna be worth every effort you put it in. Pine nuts, are the classic choice for pesto, but I like to be different. I use walnuts as well for extra crunch and that earthy, bitter flavor. This smells amazing. The only thing that I want to do right now is put my finger in there and just eat it. But I'll have to be patient, as there is still punchy pecorino cheese to add and olive oil to loosen the mix. And yes, more pasting. Keep going, but make sure the pesto stays rustic. Look at that. Leave the texture in there, because that is the difference between a good pesto and a great pesto. Now, let's get on with the rest of the dish. My handful of fresh green beans is going into salted boiling water with the local trofie pasta. Have a look at this. It looks like all little tiny curl and very, very popular around the Ligurian region. Make sure you give it a good stir and keep the water boiling. Salted boiling water. That is the secret to make sure that the pasta doesn't stick. Just a couple of minutes in the pan and I'm ready to serve. Don't waste a drop of that pesto. And let me tell you something about the cooking water. This little water that is at the end, I need that to make sure that the pesto is loose enough to coat the pasta perfectly. Fantastico. And you slowly, slowly coat the pasta into your pesto dressing. Mm. 
For extra flavor and texture, I've boiled and cubed some firm potatoes. Look at that. A few basil leaves for decoration. That's it. My trophy pasta with pesto, green beans, and potatoes. Liguria, I'm now officially your son. Buon appetito. It's time to serve my feast to my friends from the Ligurian coast. Ecco ragazzi. Wow. I just hope I've done justice to the local dishes and ingredients. A boy to you and to all your families. So lovely to have Grazie, you here. Gino. I love you all. I love you all. Let's eat. Come on. For me, this sums up what's special about Italy. Friends and family together eating amazing food in beautiful surroundings. What more could you want from life?